Hey, hey, hey. We are talking about, in this particular objective, explaining the purpose of comparison, random assignment, control, randomization, and replication of an experiment. So, turn to your page 12 of your notes. And as we look at page 12 of our notes, this is a quick reminder. When it comes to badly designed experiments, they, le they yield worthless results because of confounding variables. And remember those confounding variables are the things that are basically hiding in the bushes that affect our results. The confounding variable would be, well, I, I got a good grade on this test. Well, what was the lurking variable? Was it that you studied a little harder? Is, was it that you worked um, with a study, a study group? Okay, it's not just that you um, spent X amount of hours on it. Did you spend more hours than normal? Did you um, listen to more videos? Did you work with other people? Did you start studying a little at a time as opposed to at the last minute? Those are all the possible lurking variables. So when we're talking about an experiment, we have to determine um, or consider that it is worthless if we have not gotten rid of those confounding variables. Also, please remember here, experiments are good evidence of causation. Because we know correlation does not imply causation. But in order to determine causation, experiments are perfect. Okay, now, what is the purpose of experiments? Well, it's to compare, to test a hypothesis, or to draw a conclusion. And we know that and it's not just applicable in statistics. Of course, it's applicable in sciences. It's applicable in psychology, etc. Now, our book, this fifth edition, has not three, but four principles of experimental design. They name the first one as comparison. Well, uh... I want to say that that's a multiple choice question waiting to happen, but you'll never have one that just has the three and not have the fourth one. Because the reality is, when I see the three, we have to have control, okay, which means we have to control the lurking variables. We have to have replication, which means we have to have a large enough sample size. And we have to have randomization, which means we have to randomly allocate within the treatment group. Well, what's the point of doing all that if we're not going to do a comparison? You know, so we see, we'll see. So as I just mentioned here, okay, the idea of comparison. So we're comparing between two or more groups. It helps us to determine if a treatment actually works or is there a lurking variable, confounded variable that um, affected it. So therefore, remember the idea of the control group, it does um, reduce confounding variables. Now, this is a key point. Okay, do all experiments need a control? No, they do not need a control group, but they need to control the lurking variables. And the example that we're going to be doing in a few minutes when it comes to the infants, you'll see, because they didn't have a control group, but they controlled the lurking variables. So we'll be talking about that in a minute. Okay, but types of control groups. Control groups would be a person, a group that's given the sugar pill or some type of a fake treatment or I should put here no treatment at all. A blinded experiment. That's when the patient, no the, um, the, um, the patient, which is the experimental unit, nor the doctor or whoever's giving them the treatment. Um, I'm sorry, let me restate that that the patient or the experimental unit, they're the same person, they don't know what treatment they're receiving. So the patient doesn't know what they're getting, but the doctor will. But double blind here means that the patient nor the doctor or the person administering the treatment know what treatment's being given. So in this case, please remember, there's a third party administrator that's necessary to um, to. Um, give it out. And I mentioned the idea of Gray's Anatomy, how with Gray's Anatomy, Meredith got an envelope with a number on it, and she um, gave the treatment to um, her friend.
the, tr the friend did not know if she was receiving the treatment or not. Meredith didn't know if she was receiving the treatment or not. That's the idea of double blind. Now, let's look at, uh, we've talked about control, so now let's look at the idea of random, randomization. Okay, with randomization, we do not assign them into groups. We assign the treatment. And it helps to eliminate the um, any type of bias. It balances out the groups too, and, and balances out the effects of any um, lurking variables. Please remember, and this is the key: we we randomly allocate the treatment. We do not randomly allocate the groups. So, if you have group A and group B that are separated for some reason, and um, Within group A, they'll get me treatment one and two. Within group B, we'll get treatment one and two. Um, and on the future video, we we're talking about block because I said group A and group B. Well, what's the difference of the group? Well, it depends on how we. There's a reason for breaking up groups, not just because of the size. Well, maybe, but in but usually things are broken up into what's called blocks, which has been going to be discussed on another video. Okay, next, replication. Replication is just the bottom line. How is it done? Large, larger samples, um, large um, um, experiments are best. What replication is, is using enough subjects to reduce variation, to reduce the variability. Um, so therefore, we can trust, um, we can trust the experiment because you cannot trust experiment if you only have one or two subjects or even five subjects for that matter. It's not enough replication. So remember replication means that we need a large enough sample size. Now let's look at problem number 64 which is on your page 13. Okay now that you've read through it please notice what's happening here is you've got a hundred and You've got a group of 111 children, okay, um, and we are seeing they're all healthy, but they're from um, low um, income. They're black infants in, um, in North Carolina. All of the infants receive nutritional supplements to help them um, and help from social workers. Okay, half were assigned to an intensive preschool program, and, and the other half wasn't. And we want to explain how the four principles, remember the fourth one is, well, we have control, randomization, replication, and comparison. How this is, how um, each of these is in this experimental design. Okay, so first of all, looking at the comparison, we are, they compared children who were enrolled in an intensive program um, versus ones that are not enrolled in an intensive program. So those are your two groups. Next, our randomization. We randomly assign or randomly allocated them into the different groups. So intensive versus non-intensive. The control. Now this is what I was talking about a couple of minutes ago. We do not have a control group, but we did control the lurking variables by making, think, making sure all things are created equal, as close as we could. So all subjects were healthy, low income, um, African American. They received nutritional supplement and something I should add there, and help from social worker. So they all received that. So basically they have a level playing field. And that's what how we control the lurking variables. So even though there wasn't a control group, we control the lurking variables. And finally here, replication. Well, there were 111 kids. They were um, separated into two groups. So that means both groups had approximately 500, um, excuse me, not 500. Both groups had approximately 55 children um, in it. Um, if your thoughts are, well, these groups were not completely equal, that's not a problem. It becomes a problem if you have one group that has 50 in it and another group has like 100 in it. Okay, so now we have issues. But if one group has 55 and the other has 56, that's not a big deal. Okay, so 
What we've talked about is experimental design. Now, one more thing. I want you to turn to page 254 of your textbook. And I want to um, show you a outline of a completely randomized um, design. So this particular scenario is talking about SAT prep. And with the SAT prep here, we have two groups. We have a group that received online, okay, and another group that received classroom. So in this case, we had 50 volunteers. And please notice there were 50 volunteers. Within the volunteers, then they were randomly assigned into the two groups, broken up equally 25 and 25. But they were randomly allocated into group 1 and group 2 in which group one received treatment one, which was prep for the SATs online. And then group two, the 25 students, received the second treatment, which is the um, SAT prep through the classroom. And then what did we do? Here, we did a comparison. So as I talk about the three plus one, four, um, parts of a of a, a well-designed experiment okay we have our randomization there we have our replication because we have 25 and 25 within each treatment we have our comparison that's here and we have control and I'm hesitating on the control let me see how they controlled it Okay, so I would say, well, let me make up what, what do you think should be a part of it if, if it's, how are they going to control that lurking variable? Because there's, um, or is this a controlled group, classroom versus online? So we can consider the classroom, which is the norm, as the control group, or we, and here is the, um, the non-control situation, okay, or we can control the lurking variable and I was kind of reading back and seeing what they were doing and I didn't feel like going back to 4.4 but we can control the lurking variable by seeing that all, all the kids have a, a, a similar um, grade point average similar socioeconomic backgrounds um, and if you really wanted to we can go into ethnicity um, but I really believe that if their grade points and their socioeconomics will kind of take care of us not having to work with the ethnicity. So that's two different types of control I just spoke of. One, in which if we use this as the control group, okay, because that's normally how your SAT prep goes, versus online, which is different. That's one type of control. That's a control group. And the other one, like I said, is controlling the lurking variables by... Um, making sure that there are similar characteristics within um, the entire set of students. So, okay, peace out. TTFM, ta-ta for now.